Hey guys, thought I'd do a quick video because it's been a while since I released one for YouTube. I've actually been working on a course for the last two years that will teach people 3D using Blender from a, a beginner level all the way up to a professional level. So if you want to be notified when that gets released, make sure you subscribe with the bell icon below. But that's not quite ready yet, so I thought I'd make a quick one today. And I saw this on Facebook, how can you create this sort of an effect inside of Blender? So I thought I'd have a quick go at that now. And if you've not heard of Turbo Tools, then I'd recommend you check it out on either the Blender Market or on Gumroad. And what it does, it will speed up cycles renders for a typical indoor scene, often as much as upgrading your graphics card by two to three generations. Find out more and see user reviews in the links below. Right, so we'll start with a new scene then, and I'll drop down, get rid of the default cube, and we'll add something a bit more interesting. We'll go with a Sousa. And the easiest way to do this is in Cycles, and we'll also do it in the Geometry Node Editor. So let's go to the Modifiers. I'm going to add a Geometry Nodes Modifier, create a new one, and then we'll open the Geometry Nodes Editor. And now we've got this Geometry Node set up for us. So the first thing we want to do is place points on, if we look at the original image, we've got points both on the faces but also on the vertices as well. So back to Blender, and the first thing we'll do is put some on the faces. So we'll do Shift A, S. We'll do Mesh to Points. We'll plug that in there, and I'll say put them on the faces. So now we've got them on each of the faces. And let's go to Cycles mode as well, so we can see these rendered a bit more nicely. And we'll turn off the overlays. So we've got this result. Now I want to add a material to it. So I'm going to open up a material editor. And we'll say new material, and we'll give it a, for now, we'll give it a red color. And in here, in the geometry nodes, I'm going to say, search for set material. And I'll call this material uh, balls. And then we'll choose that in here. So now these are going to be this material. So I'm going to make these balls have different colors randomly. So Shift A, S, I'm going to put down the point info node. And I'm going to plug this, Shift A, S, into a ramp. I'm going to put some random colors on this ramp using, let's go with uh, hue saturation levels or lightness. And then we'll turn it to clockwise. We'll set the first color to something like a red. We'll set the second color to something like a, uh, a blue. Now we've got these random colors going across the ramp. So if I plug in the random value into the factor, and then we'll plug the color into the emission color, we're going to get random colors. I'll also plug this into the base color as well. So what I want to do is make sure that these balls are differently proportioned based on the distance from the middle of the face to the nearest edge. So I'm going to do that by creating an attribute in geometry node. So I'm going to say Shift A, S, geometry proximity, and then we'll do Shift A, S, set named attribute, or was it named, store named attribute, rather. I'm going to plug the distance into the value. I'm going to call this P size. Then we'll plug this geometry in here. We'll plug this one into there, and now we'll plug this one into there. So basically what we're doing is we're measuring the distance, the center of the face to the nearest edge. So we need to change the geometry proximity from faces to edges. I'm going to store it in the face. So this means we're going to measure from the current face to the nearest edge and store that in an attribute called P size. And if we look in the, let's bring this across, and we'll change this to the spreadsheet. We'll go into faces where we've stored it. We currently can't see anything. And the reason is we need to add a viewer node. So on this mesh, just before we get to change it all to points, I'm going to control shift click on it to add a viewer node. And now we can see we've got this P size attribute at the top here. We're given all the different various distances for each face. We'll just get rid of this now. And we'll get rid of that as well. For the radius of these points, I'm just going to say use this attribute called P size. 
So shift A S named attribute. I'm going to say P size, the one we've just created, and I'll plug this into the radius. And now all the points are going to be scaled based on the face size that they're associated with. So let's now create the wireframe so we can see that more easily. Shift A S, and we're going to say mesh to curve. Drop this in here. And we'll plug that in to the mesh. Make it a bit bigger. So we plug this mesh to curve, and I'm going to say Shift A S curve to mesh. We'll plug this in here, and now we'll need to give it a profile so it's got so the wire has got some thickness. Let's just have a look at what it looks like without that. So Alt Shift on this mesh to curve node, and turn overlays on so we can see the result. You can see we've got the wireframe now. But cycles won't render the wires, which is why we need to add this curve to mesh. So Control Shift click on this one, and we need to specify a profile for it. So Shift A S, and we're going to put down the circle, the curve circle. We'll plug this. We'll just reduce the size to 0 0.01 meters, and now we'll plug this into profile. And now we've actually got some thickness to those wires that cycles can render. So we'll turn the overlays back off. And we'll change the resolution to something a bit smaller, like six. So we've got that. If we now join that to the rest of it, so let's come across here. We we'll do Shift A S, join geometry, drop this one in here, and then we'll drop this one in there. So now we can see both, and it becomes more obvious what that attribute was for that we set up earlier, where it measured the distance between the center of the face and the closest edge to make these spheres a perfect fit. Now, in the demonstration image, we'd also had them on the vertices. So what I'm going to do is create another one of these. Let's come across here. We'll just move these out of the way. I'll say Shift P, bring up the end panel, and I'll name this to wireframe. And then with these ones, I'll say Shift P, stall distance. This one, Shift P, I'll say create balls and now I want to do the same thing again so I'm going to duplicate this one with Control shift D so it keeps the wires and this time I'm going to change this to vertices and we'll create another join geometry so shift D on this one we'll copy it across and drop it in here and put this one in there this is just so that the we assign the material once to both sets of uh, balls come out now we've got them on the vertices as well what we might want to do is modify the size of the spheres. And to do this, we go over here, drag this across. What we can do is modify it before we store it. So we do Shift A, S, Math, drop the Math node in here. Let's go full screen. We'll put that there. And we can say Multiply. And then we can Control, based on the this size for the multiplication, the size of the uh, of the spheres. So if I change this to 1, it's going to be full size, 0.5, you can see it's much smaller. Now what I want to do is subdivide the geometry. So in here, I'm going to create a new link there by shift, right click and drag in. Shift A, S, we'll drop down a subdivision surface, drop this in here, and now we've got more resolution. Now I want to apply different material to the wireframe. So I'm going to go into the object, I'm going to add a new material, new one, I'm going to call this material glass tubes. And I'll just set the transmission to one. And I need to assign it so we can see what's happening. So in the wireframe bit, we'll do Shift A, S, set material, we'll drop that there. I'm going to choose glass tubes. So now I'm going to set the Roughness to zero. Maybe just add a little bit of roughness. I'll just render a small amount because I've got a very old graphics card. So I'll just do a little section there so you can see what it looks like. So we can go back into the balls material and we'll probably increase the emission strength to something like five. So we've got a bit more brightness. But I don't really want to have to come inside the geometry node network every time I want to change some parameters. So what we can do instead is put some of these parameters on the front end modifier for easier access. So I'll plug this, 
I'll just copy this geometry and put across. Put that in there. And I'll plug the value for the multiplication in there. And in the group, we'll say this is going to be ball multiplier. Let's grab this one. Put this over here. Press Alt P. And then we'll plug this material in. And we'll call this one Y material. And then we'll do the same down here. So Shift D, bring it down here. Alt P. And we'll just move it over here. I'll plug that one in there. And we'll call this one ball material. We could do with setting the radius of the wire as well. So I'm just going to grab this one this time. Shift D, bring it over here. And now we'll set the another one for the radius of that wireframe. So I'll call this one wire radius. And now in the modifier, if we don't have this open, so if we bring this right down, go into the modifier tab, you can now tweak all the parameters to your heart's desire until you get the look that you're after. And then all that's left to do is modify the materials until you get the exact look that you like. And if you want to add more balls in between the edges and also more per face without modifying the look of the wireframe, then what you can do is subdivide the branch that the points are being created from without subdividing the branch that the wireframe is created from. So on Shift A, S, subdivide mesh without smoothing it. And now we're going to get additional balls in between the wires, as you can see there, and also five for every face. And of course, now you've got this set up for one object, we can actually apply this to multiple objects, one at a time, or we can apply it to an entire scene. And I'll show you how we can apply it to an entire scene very quickly. So let's create a duplicate of this one. I'll just rename this one to Wireball Object. And I'll create a fake user so we don't lose it if we close the blend file with it not in use. And I'll make a duplicate of it. Let's just expand this up. And instead of using the geometry, the current geometry as the input, I'm going to use a collection. So Shift A, search for collection, collection info. We'll drop this in here. So wire this up to the mesh instead of the current geometry. And we need to realize these as from instances to actual geometry. So Shift A, S, realize instances, and that will create the instances that this outputs, the collection info outputs, into actual geometry so that we can do subdivisions and things like that. And we'll connect this one, the bottom one, to the collection. So now we've got this over here. I'll probably move that collection up to the top. There we go. If we come out now, you can see we've got a collection option at the top of the modifier. We've got a bit of an error. Node groups geometry input must be the, the first. All right, I didn't know that. So we'll take the geometry and put that to the top. That's got rid of that error. So what we need to do is create some more objects. We'll put all of these into a new collection. So press M, new collection. I'll call it light up. We'll click OK. Now, Suzanne can't be inside the collection. This is going to be the controller object. And we can hide this collection now, so it's no longer visible in the viewport. But Suzanne is still, still going to be visible, and we can now tell the modifier uh, which collection to use. So light up, and now we're going to get all those objects coming at once. And we can, again, obviously modify exactly how we want it, and we can even change the number of subdivisions. Speaking of which, I'd probably connect these up as well. So let's just add the number of subdivisions. So this is the subdivision surface subdivisions. And also we'll do it for the mesh as well. Put those in there. And I'll just rename those. This one's going to be subdiv surface. And this one's going to be subdiv balls. So that's the one that allows you to have more balls than you've got faces, which you would hope would be the case. So I'm going to set the subdivision balls to zero. And I'll set the subdivision surface to zero as well. And then I'll change the multiplier for the balls to 0.5. Now you can see we've got all of those being controlled by this one modifier on Suzanne. And maybe I'll turn up the Y radius a bit as well. And you can get all sorts of cool effects. You don't have to just use it for this one type of effect. So for example, let's modify the ball material to no longer be emissive. And we'll give it a HDRI world environment background. So just load in any HDRI. So environment texture, plug this in and we'll load one up. 
And we'll just try a few different material settings and also settings for the modifier as well till we get something pretty cool. Maybe have a look through the camera view and into camera mode. Then we can start adding things like depth of field and just rotating the view around till we get a nice look. And then we we'll go to the camera settings. We'll turn on depth of field and we'll choose a focus area. So I'll come under distance. I'll press E to bring up the eyedropper and then I'll click on something that I want to focus on. So maybe this point here. And then we can turn the F stop down until we start getting the background blurred out or vice versa. We could choose one of the ones at the back. So maybe this one. And then you see we need a nice depth of field effect on the things that are close to the camera. And of course, this will work on animated objects and everything that you can throw at it. So that's basically how I would approach it. I'm sure there's many other ways you can do it, but I think this is probably the one of the best ways because cycles can render all of these points without actually creating any geometry. So it's incredibly light. And there we are. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it's um, you know something fun to try out. And don't forget, if you want to find out about my upcoming 30, well, between around about 20 and 30 hour full course, which will teach you how to become from beginner all the way up to a sort of a high level professional standard, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and you'll get notified on release. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.